Hi friends, welcome to Talent Spent. I introduce you to a sample session of our placement readiness program by our expert faculty. Please go through the session. Let us now take the third module from time and distance where generally we can solve the question by equating the time in two different cases. Let us look at the example one here. Two trains start at the same time from A and B and proceed towards B and A at 36 km per hour and 42 km per hour respectively. When they meet, it is found that one train has moved 48 km more than the other. What is the distance between A and B? So here we are supposed to find out the distance between the two points A and B. So as given the question, there are two points, point A and point B or we can say there are two stations, station A and station B. Two trains start at the same time from these two stations and proceed towards each other at 36 and 42 km per hour respectively. For example, one train starts at 36 km per hour from station A and moves towards station B. At the same time, the other train starts from station B and moves towards station A at the speed of 42 km per hour. Now, let us assume that this is the path between the two points A and B. When the two trains are moving in opposite direction, they meet at some point in between. Let us assume that this is the meeting point. And at this meeting point, it is found that one train has moved 48 kilometers more than the other. So let us assume that the distance covered by the first train up to this point is x. So the distance covered by the train b up to that point will be 48 plus x. Why? Because one train has moved 48 kilometers more than the other. So up to meeting point, if the distance of first train, which comes from station A, is x, then the distance of second train, which is started from station B, should be 48 plus x. We are supposed to find out the total distance between the two stations A and B. Let us assume that the total distance here is D. So as you can see, the total distance can be taken as x plus 48 plus x. Or that is nothing but 2x plus 48. One important point that we need to understand to solve these type of questions is whenever two bodies that start at the same time and move towards each other in the opposite direction, then the time taken by them to reach the meeting point will be same. For example, as in this case, the trains started from A and B at the same time and they started moving towards each other. So when they meet at the meeting point, the time taken by the first train to reach the meeting point will be same as time taken by the second train to reach the meeting point. So very clearly we can say that the time taken by the first train which started from A up to meeting point should be equal to the time taken by the second train which started from B up to meeting point. So these two times are equal. Time we know is nothing but distance by speed. So the distance travelled by the first train from A to meeting point is x divided by the speed is 36 km per hour which should be equal to the distance travelled by the train from B to the meeting point is 48 plus x and the speed here is 42 km per hour. So by simplifying this equation we can get the value of x. So as you can see here this is 6 into 6 and 6 into 7. So when we cross multiply we get 7x equals to 6 into 48 plus 6x. So when 6x is taken on the other side 7x minus 6x will be equal to x that is 6 into 48. Now 6 into 48 is 288. So we can say that x will be equal to 288 kilometers. Remember friends, we are taking kilometers because the speeds here are given in terms of kilometers per hour. So whatever distance we get, that should be taken in terms of hours. We have to find out the total distance between the two points A and B. So the total distance D can be taken as x plus 48 plus x. Or that is nothing but 2x plus 48. So this will be equal to 2 into 288 plus 48. 2 into 288 will be 576. 576 plus 48 will be 624. So the total distance here is 624 kilometers. So this is how we can equate the time taken by the two trains to reach the meeting point and find out the total distance. In some questions, instead of asking the total distance, the distance of the meeting point from station A or station B is asked. So very clearly, the distance of the meeting point from station A is x. So we can stop here itself. 
there the there our answer will be 288 kilometers. And if the distance from station B is asked, then the answer will be 48 plus x. So by adding 48 kilometers to 288, we can get the distance from station B to the meeting point. So for any type of question asked here, we can always equate the time taken by the two trains to reach the meeting point and get the required answer. Friends, after understanding the traditional method of solving the problem, let us now look at the smart way of getting the answer for this question. In this method, we get the answer in simple two steps without writing any of these steps. Let us understand how to work on that. Here, the speeds of the two trains are 36 km per hour and 42 km per hour respectively. That means, the speed of the first train is 36 km per hour. So, we can say that in each hour, the first train covers a distance of 36 kilometers and the second train covers a distance of 42 kilometers in each hour. Very clearly, as both the trains are started at the same time, the first train covers 36 kilometers in one hour and the second train covers 42 kilometers in one hour. So the difference of the distances covered by these two trains in one hour will be 6 kilometers. So for every hour, the difference of the distances will be 6 kilometers. Suppose both the trains travel for 2 hours each. We can say that the total difference in the distances covered by the two trains will be 6 plus 6. Because 6 kilometers is the first hour difference, second, 6 kilometers is the second hour difference. So total difference will be 12 kilometers. Similarly, if each of these trains travels for 3 hours each, in each hour we get a difference of 6 kilometers. So the total difference will be 6 into 3, 18 kilometers and so on. So very clearly, for every hour, the difference of their distances increase by 6 kilometers. So with the help of this point, let us now understand both the trains have travelled for how many hours. We know that in each hour, the difference of their distances is 6 kilometers. But as in the given question, the total difference is 48 kilometers. We can say that this has happened over 48 by 6, that is equal to 8 hours. Nothing but, in each hour, the difference is 6 kilometers. Total difference is 48. So 48 when divided by 6 will give us the number of hours. So now very clear that both the trains have travelled for 8 hours each. Once we have got the total time that each train has travelled for, we can find out the total distance as 8 into 36 plus 8 into 42. Because the first train has travelled for 8 hours. So the distance covered will be 8 into 36 as the speed is 36. And the second train also has travelled for 8 hours. So the distance covered will be 8 into 42 by the second train. And both the distances together will give the total distance. So by taking 8 common here, we get 36 plus 42. And by solving this, 8 into 78 will be equal to 624. So we can say that the total distance here is 624. So friends, this is how we can solve the problem in a smart way without writing all these steps. The only points which we need to look for is the difference of the distances covered by each of the trains in each hour and the total number of hours for which both the trains have travelled. That can be taken as the total difference divided by the difference in each hour. And once we get the time, we can find out the total distance as time into the speed. So try avoiding those lengthy procedures and to get the answer in a smart way. Let us now take another interesting example from model 3. The question here is, a thief spots a policeman 100 meters away and takes to his heels. If the policeman gives a chase immediately, then how far would the thief have run before he is caught? The speeds of the policeman and the thief are 10 km per hour and 8 km per hour respectively. So as given here, a thief spots a policeman 100 meters away and takes to his heels. That means he starts running immediately. And the policeman gives a chase immediately. So as soon as the policeman spots the thief, he also starts chasing the thief there. So the question is, how far will the thief run before he gets caught by the policeman? And the speeds of the policeman and the thief are 10 km per hour and 8 km per hour respectively. So as given in the question, let us assume that the thief is standing at this point and the policeman is 100 meters away. So the distance between the thief and the policeman is 100 meters. Now as soon as the thief spots the policeman, he starts running. right? And he can run at the speed of 8 km per hour. And immediately the policeman starts chasing the thief at the speed of 10 km per hour. So when they are running in the same direction, definitely the thief gets caught at some point because 
his speed is lesser than the speed of the policeman. So as they are running in the same direction, let us assume that they get caught at this point. So the policeman catches the thief at this point. So we need to find out the distance which the thief has covered before he gets caught by the policeman. So we need to find out the distance between the thief's initial position and the final position where he is caught by the policeman. Now as we can see here, the same point that we have discussed in example 1 is valid. That is nothing but both the persons have started at the same time. So whenever they meet, the time taken for them to reach the meeting point should be same irrespective of their distances covered and their speeds. So nothing but the time taken by the policeman to reach from his initial position to the final position should be same as time taken by the thief to reach from his initial position to the final position. So let us consider that equality of time, that is time taken by policeman should be equal to time taken by thief. Now time is nothing but distance by speed. So time taken by policeman is the distance covered by policeman by the speed of policeman. And time taken by thief is distance covered by thief by the speed of thief. As we have considered here, the distance between the thief's initial position and the final position is D. And we can understand that the total distance covered by the policeman is 100 plus D. Why? Because he has to cover the extra 100 meters and then the D meters which is covered by the thief. So the total distance covered by the policeman is 100 plus D divided by speed of the policeman is 10 equals to the distance covered by the thief is only D. That should be divided by the speed of the thief, 8. Again friends, if you observe, the distance here 100 is in meters and the speeds are in kilometers per hour. But as such, the conversion is not required because anyhow, the units are balanced on both the sides. So we need not convert these meters into kilometers or this speed of kilometers per hour into meters per second. Directly, we can proceed with the calculation. So here, if you try to simplify this, we get 2 into 4 and 2 into 5 is 10 here. And with cross multiplication, we can say that 4 into 100 plus 4D should be equal to 5 into D. So very clearly, 5D minus 4D, that is D will be equal to 4 into 100, that is 400 meters. So the distance covered by the thief before he gets caught is 400 meters. Remember, here we are taking the distance in meters because the distance here, 100 is given in meters. So whatever units is given for the distance, same has to be taken for the obtained answer. So the total distance is 400 meters. So this is the distance which is covered by the thief before he gets caught. Suppose if the question says how much distance is covered by the policeman before he catches the thief, then our answer should be 100 plus D. That is nothing but 100 plus 400, 500 meters. So friends, remember that to solve these type of questions where two bodies started at the same time and they meet at a particular point, we can simply equate the time taken by each of the bodies to reach the meeting point and get the desired answer. Hi friends, welcome back. I am pretty sure you liked the video. And you can also access more than 400 such videos where a model wise discussion on each topic has been covered. Also, you get to interact with our top faculty in India through live sessions. Not only this friends, you also get to analyze your strengths and weaknesses with 100 plus online tests that are available on our website. So if you want this extra edge in your preparation for an IT career, then log on to our website www.talentsprint.com. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.